Communication with Masters by H.P. Blavatsky, read by Dave Marsland of Cardiff Theosophical Society. This article is in fact a letter written by H.P. Blavatsky in 1885 to an unspecified close friend who many believe to have been Countess Wachmeister. It has been said by Babaji that only the Chela, entranced, can reach the normal objective, meaning physical and personal, state of the Mahatmas. How then about those who live with them, whether Chela's or ignorant servants, those who see them again objectively in their material bodies? Unless one regarded the masters as spirits, the query seems pretty unanswerable. If the above sentence, on the other hand, relates only to Mahatmas at a distance, then the question changes. 1. When Master orders a chela to precipitate a note or letter in his handwriting because of the intense desire of some one individual to that effect, a desire or prayer which, according to occult law, the Masters feel, and if the addressee is worthy, the about to notice one or the other, he gets according to his deserts. When the master, who certainly cannot descend to our level, gives such an order to a chela, the latter acts according to the best of his ability, and if he, in any way, perverts the meaning, so much the worse for that chela and him or her who troubled the master with his or her petty worldly affairs. When the master, who certainly cannot descend to our level, gives such an order to a chela, the latter acts according to the best of his ability, and if he, in any way, perverts the meaning, so much the worse for that chela, and him or her who troubled the master, with his or her petty worldly affairs. But each time, when the desire for master's interference is intense and sufficiently pure, though foolish in their sight, the master's sacramental phrase is, Satisfy so-and-so to the chela. 2. When the Mahatmas, or my master for instance, who appear to Olcott in America, appear or manifest themselves in their astral bodies, my Avi Rupa, the whole of the fourth, a portion of the fifth, and even an emanation from the sixth principle, it is themselves, the masters. Never would an elemental dare, if the creature were an intelligent being, which it is not, assume the master's form. Those who say it blaspheme. They lower the powers of the masters and their sanctity, and moreover, they have no idea of what an elemental really means. Perhaps they think of the elementaries at the seances, who clothe themselves out of human reflections and the images in the brains of those present. These could produce a sorry caricature of one of the masters, were they in the presence of a strong medium who had seen masters' portraits, but even then the fraud would soon be detected. 3. When one sees a master clairvoyantly, and when the seer is pure and worthy of the blessing, his desire is sure to have attracted the master's attention, and then it is himself. To produce the vision clairvoyantly, whether subjective or even objective, the master has to make a very slight effort indeed, if the person is a clairvoyant notabene, otherwise it does require a great loss of energy. He has only to send his astral reflection on the current that is thrown like a bridge between the seer and the master he thinks of, not on a ray of light but on the Akashi Cosmomagnetic Fluid or Wave, at the command of every Mahatma or Great Adept. There are hundreds of things missing or incomplete in, and here the name of the work referred to has been removed. The teachings were given by Mahatma K.H., a few letters written by himself, others precipitated by his chalers. The mistakes made, whether through the fault of the precipitators or by others, have been and will be gradually explained and corrected. 4. 
In case of ordinary persons who will themselves out of their physical bodies, the astral form, whether it becomes objective or remains subjective, which depends on the psychic constitution of that person, is composed of the third and second principles, the fluidic perispirit that every human or even animal being has inside himself. The linga sharira proper cannot be moved until death, for it is part and parcel of the second or life principle jiva. When C saw B so plainly, and he wrote to her that he had been thinking intently of her at the time, it was his astral body, materialised in Akasha, unconsciously to himself, emanating from his lower principles that got projected and became visible to see. H. P. Blavatsky, 1885